Westerlands lie along the coast of the Sunset Sea, with Iron Man's Bay and the Iron Islands to the north. Before the Targaryen conquest, it was known as the Kingdom of the Rock. The Westerlands are not the largest, most populous or most fertile part of the realm, but they are the richest. Full of hills and crags, the land is dotted with mines from which pour gold and silver in astonishing quantities. There are gold mines at Casterly Rock, the Golden Tooth, Castamere, Nuns Deep and the Pendrick Hills. Besides farming, there is also some fishery in Lannisport and on Fair Isle. House Lannister is the major house of the Westerlands. Military strength of the Westerlands is about 50,000 men strong, though this count includes even green boys and depletes most castles of any protection. While the Lannister armies are not as huge as those of the Reach, they are the best equipped in the realm with heavily armored soldiers and cavalry. The Westerlands border on the waters of Iron Man's Bay to the north and thus are under threat of ironborn attacks along the coasts. House Lannister commonly keeps a large fleet of warships to defend against these attacks. The Greyjoy Rebellion began with a sneak attack which burned the Lannister fleet at Anchor. Little is known of the time before the coming of the First Men, like the rest of Westeros. The children of the forest and giants lived in the Westerlands and fought with the First Men when they came. After the pact at the Isle of Faces, the children only kept the forests. During the Age of Heroes, the legendary hero and trickster Len the Clever acquired Casterly Rock in some manner from House Casterly. According to legend, he is the ancestor of the Lannisters who became the kings of the rock with Casterly Rock as their seat. There are many different and contradictory myths about Land the Clever, assuming he actually existed, which only share the basic description that he swindled Casterly Rock from House Casterly using only his wits. Though there are even rival tales about what specifically winning it by his wits involved. Some stories say that he found a secret tunnel into Casterly Rock and snuck around inside causing intrigue between the Casterly stealing treasures from one brother's chamber and planting them in another's to cause strife until ultimately the Casterlys killed each other and Lan took over and possibly finished off any survivors. Other tales say that he used the secret tunnel to infest the castle with rats and vermin until the Casterlys fled, while yet other tales say that he managed to sneak lions into the castle, who killed several Casterlys and caused the rest to flee. The more pragmatic story is that Lan was simply a man at arms in the castle who impregnated Lord Casterly's daughter and ended up marrying the girl, because there were no other heirs left when Lord Casterly died, Lan became the new Lord of the Rock through his child. This story also has several variants, as in some, there simply was no other heir, while in others, Lan had married a low-ranking daughter and had to use his wits in various palace intrigues to increase his power and eliminate rival heirs who were further ahead in the line of succession. Even Lan's origins are not clear in the legends. Some say that he was actually an Andal adventurer who came to the far west, though others dismissed this because the main Andal invasion didn't occur until thousands of years later. Then again, it is not outright impossible that he was simply an Andal adventurer or perhaps exile who wandered all the way to the far side of Westeros. Even so, most versions of the story do assume that he was simply one of the first men, the only human settlers of Westeros at the time. Whatever the case, the rulers of Casterly Rock eventually married into invading Andal families and the modern House Lannister came to be. On one other point, the tales all agree. Lan never called himself a king. The Casterlys were very rich, but they had not called themselves kings either, and Lan didn't crown himself when he took over Casterly Rock. The Lannisters only started calling themselves kings many generations later, after their steadily accumulating wealth made them very powerful. The Lannister kings of the Rock gradually conquered or acquired neighboring territory, including the lands of the Rains and the Bainfoots, 
they initially resisted the Andal invasion, but later Lannister kings allowed the Andals to marry into Westernman nobility. In contrast to most kings of firstman origin, the support of the Andals allowed the kings of the Rock to expand their power. When King Gerald III the Lannister died without male issue, a council crowned his daughter's husband, Sir Joffrey Lydon, who became the first Andal king of the Rock, Joffrey Lannister. With Andal support, the Lannisters extended their rule to the Golden Tooth and Fair Isle and engaged in border wars with the kings of the Trident and kings of the Reach. The growing strength of House Lannister allowed them to expel the Ironborn from the western coasts and King Geralt the Great raided the Iron Islands and brought hostages back to the Rock. Some of the eastern hills of what is now the Westerlands were historically ruled by kings of the rivers and the hills, such as the Muds and the Teaks. Loren I Lannister, King of the Rock, mustered his armies to fight Aegon Targaryen, Lord of Dragonstone, during Aegon's conquest. Allied with Myrn IX Gardener, King of the Reach, they assembled the enormous host of the two kings. However, they were no match for Targaryen dragons. King Loren escaped the so-called Field of Fire and submitted to Aegon. His primacy in the Westerlands as Warden of the Vast was confirmed by the Targaryens. Since this time, the Westerlands have been part of the Seven Kingdoms, controlled by the Iron Throne. During the rule of Lord Titus Lannister, the power of House Lannister was nominal. Titus was held in low esteem and was largely ignored by his vassals. Lord Roger Rain took command of the Lannister army after Sir Jason Lannister was killed in the War of the Nine Penny Kings. Houses Rain and Tarbeck eventually rebelled against the rule of Titus, but his son, Sir Tywin, led the campaign against the Rain Tarbuck Revolt. The two families were extinguished and their respective seats of Castamere and Tarbuck Hall were destroyed. Since this time, no house has dared oppose House Lannister in the Westerlands. The prestigious Tywin served for a time as a hand of the king for King Aerys II Targaryen. Predominantly mountainous, the Westerlands are well defended from external attack. There is only one major pass through the mountains in the east of the Westerlands, near the headwaters of the Red Fork of the Trident River. Thus, there is only one narrow and predictable path that armies moving between the Westerlands and Riverlands can normally take, and it is guarded by the Castle of Golden Tooth. Now let's talk more about the houses of the Westerlands. House Estran of Winehall. House Bainfort of Bainfort. It is one of the main families sworn to Casterly Rock. The Bainforts were petty first man kings of the Age of Heroes, claiming descent from the Hooded Man, a legendary figure from the Age of Heroes. The last Hooded King was Morgan Bainfort, whose thralls were defeated after 20 years of war by Lorien I Lannister, King of the Rock, House Westerling of the Crag. The Westerlings are an ancient line and proud house that are descended from the first man of the Age of Heroes. They once intermarried with the kings of the rock, and a Jane Westerling married King Magar I of House Targaryen. The Westerling's fortunes have faltered over the years, with lands and mines being sold until the Westerlings were reduced little wealth and influence. They now scarcely have the funds to maintain their keep, which is more ruin than stronghold, and are regarded as having more pride than power. The words of House Westerling are honor not honors. House Marband of Fashmark. House Marband was formed by the union of first man and Andal nobles during the Andal invasion. The words of House Marband are burning bright. House Lefford of the Golden Tooth. House Lefford was formed by the union of an Andal warlord with a noblewoman of the first man. The Lefords presumably received the Golden Tooth when Syrian Lannister, the King of the Rock, conquered the area. The gold from the Golden Tooth helped establish House Lannister as one of the richest houses in Westeros. Although the Golden Tooth is a small castle, it is a strong keep commanding the hill road. The castle controls the main entrance to the Vesterlands from the east. House Brax of Hornvale. House Brax is among the chief bannermen of House Lannister of Casterly Rock. 
House Lidden of the Deep Den. The Liddens were Andal adventurers who settled in the Westerlands. Sir Geoffrey Lidden married into House Lannister and became the first Andal king of the Rock, ruling as King Geoffrey Lannister. House Lidden is also among the chief bannermen of House Lannister. House Sarvik is a noble house from River Spring in the Westerlands. The family also owns a manse in King's Landing. The wards of House Sarvik family is Hope, protected always. House Serret of Silver Hill. The wards of House Serret are I have no rival. House Greenfield of Greenfield. It is a house of landed knights sworn to Lannisters of Casterly Rock. The Greenfields are an ancient line dating back to the days of the first men. During the Age of Heroes, they built the Bower, a weirwood castle now called Greenfield. House Swift of Cornfield, a knightly house and one of the principal houses sworn to House Lannister of Casterly Rock. Sir Edison Hill, the bastard of Cornfield, was a legendary brother of the King's God during the reign of Aegon I Targaryen, who eventually rose to the position of Lord Commander. During the Dance of the Dragons, House Swift was apparently a full fledged noble house. The words of House Cornfield are Awake, awake. House Crakehall of Crakehall. The Crakehalls are known for their uncommon robustness. The Crakehalls are a house of first man origin who claim descent from Crake the Boar Killer from the Age of Heroes. After defeating King Hagon Hor, Sir Aubrey Crakehall briefly ruled as a king of the Iron Islands before being drowned by the Shrike. Their seat, Crakehall, is located along the sea road. The words of House Crakehall are non so Fierce. Sea Road, also known as an Ocean Road, is one of the major roads in the Seven Kingdoms. It connects Casterly Rock and Lannisport in the Westerlands to the castle of Highgarden in the Reach. The Sea Road passes through Crakehall and Old Oak. The road has to cross the Mander River to reach Highgarden, which is located on the southern bank of the river. At Highgarden, the Sea Road meets the Rose Road, which heads north and east towards King's Landing and south to Old Town, House Clegane of Clegane's Keep. This house of landed knights holds fealty to House Lannister of Casterly Rock and are among their primary bannermen. The keep was given to the first Clegane knight, the kennel master at Casterly Rock, until one autumn year when he saved Lord Titus Lannister from a lioness and lost the leg and three dogs in the effort. As a reward, Titus gave him lands and the tower house and took his son as his squire. The three dogs of the Clegane sigil represent those that died saving Titus. The keep has a fearsome reputation, one that lives up to that of its lord, Sir Gregor Clegane. It is said that servants disappear unaccountably and even the dogs are afraid to enter the hall. Gregor Clegane called the mountain that rides, or simply mountain, the eldest grandson of a brave cattle master, was knighted by the Prince Rhaegar Targaryen, the heir of King Aerys II Targaryen. During the sack of King's Landing, Gregor murdered Rhaegar's son, the infant Prince Aegon Targaryen, before raping and murdering his mother and Rhaegar's bride, Princess Elia Martell. Gregor is known for his unspeakable cruelty. This is mirrored in the mountain's men, who casually commit atrocities during their campaigns. Sander, his younger brother, was driven away by this behavior, taking service with House Lannister and refusing to take a knight's vows to avoid association with his elder brother. The father of Gregor and Sander died in a hunting incident shortly after King Robert I Baratheon was crowned. Their sister died young under queer circumstances. House Prester of Feast Fires Their seat at Feast Fires is located at the westernmost point of the Westerlands. The words of House Prester are tireless. House Canning of Kais. House was founded by Havoc Canning, an ironborn warrior from House Canning of Harlow from the Iron Islands. During the decline of the Driftwood Kings of the Ironborn, Havoc the Horse Son used his horn as a signal for the hordes of Kais to open a postern gate, allowing his men to take the town for House Lannister, the Kings of the Rock. Havoc's war horn, the horn of Havoc, is passed down amongst the family as an 
heirloom, House Farman of Fair Castle. It is the noble house ruling from Fair Castle on Fair Isle off the coast of the Vesterlands. They are known for their hatred of the Ironborn from the Iron Islands. The Farmans are an ancient line dating back to the days of the First Men, when they ruled as petty kings and guarded the western coast of Westeros from Ironborn rivers. The Farmans knelt to Tommen I Lannister, King of the Rock, when he raised a great fleet and married the daughter of the last Farman king. At some point, House Farman liberated Fair Isle from Ironborn occupation when Gilbert Farman incited a small folk uprising. Some years after, Lord Tywin Lannister defeated the Rain Tarback Rebellion, Lord Farman of Fair Castle grew truculent. Tywin sent him as an envoy, a musician playing the reins of Castamere, and that was enough to make Lord Farman reconsider his position. Jane Farman was Cersei Lannister's companion at Casterly Rock during her youth. It is possible that she is the daughter of the rebellious Lord Farman and was requested by Tywin as a hostage to ensure his loyalty. House Sarsfield of Sarsfield. House Sarsfield was formed by the union of first men and Andal nobles during the Andal invasion. The wards of House Sarsfield are true to the mark. House Tarback and House Rain were once a noble houses, but both went extinct. House Tarback of Tarback Hall, by the reign of King Aegon V Targaryen, House Tarback was an old but impoverished line who had been in a slow decline for centuries. This halted with the marriage of Lord Valderan Tarback to the widowed Alan Rain, who had ties with House Lannister of Casterly Rock. House Rain became close allies with the Tarbacks, and the Tarbacks used funds from Lord Titus Lannister to rebuild crumbling Tarback Hall. Valderan increased the number of household knights under his command from 20 to 500. Together with House Rain, the Tarbacks became the most powerful vassals of the Lannisters, but they were also defiant and disorderly. When Tywin Lannister was only 10, Ellen Tarback laughed when the marriage of General Lannister and Emman Frey was announced by Tywin's father, Lord Titus. When the sons of Titus came back from the War of the Ninepenny Kings, Sir Tywin began demanding repayment for all the gold that had been lent out. The confident Lord Valderan was imprisoned by Tywin at Casterly Rock. In retaliation, Alan imprisoned two Lannisters of Lannisport, as well as Stafford Lannister, whose sister Joanna was betrothed to Tywin. Tywin counseled that Lord Valderan should be returned to his wife in free pieces, but Lord Titus agreed to the exchange of hostages at Castamere, seat of House Rain. Less than a year later, however, Tywin sent four ravens to Castamere and Tarback Hall, demanding that they answer for their crimes. Instead of doing so, both houses rose up in open revolt, which started the Rain Tarback Rebellion. After Tywin quickly defeated Walderon's host, he ordered the beheadings of Lord Tarback and his supporters. Elin and Tian the Red were killed during Tywin's assault on Tarback Hall. Tywin supposedly smiled when Tarback Hall collapsed with Lady Elin within. House Rain of Castamere. House Rain was a family of first men who made their subterranean seat at Castamere. The mines, silver and gold, made them wealthy, much like the Lannisters of Casterly Rock. The Rains joined the Kingdom of the Rock when King Lorien first landed. Lannister, Veda Rain daughter. The downfall of the house had its origins in the time of Lord Robert Rain. He arranged the betrothal of his daughter Ellen to Tywald Lannister, the son and heir of Lord Gerald Lannister. Tywald served Robert as a squire during the Peak Uprising, but Robert and Tywald were killed in battle at Starpike. Lady Ellen, who had long anticipated becoming the Lady of Casterly Rock, was unwilling to forsake that dream. She persuaded Tywald's twin, Theon, to set aside his own fiancé and espouse her instead. During this time, Lady Ellen held a splendid court at the Rock, staging magnificent tourneys and balls, and filling the Rock with musicians, mummers and reigns. She bestowed honors, offices and lands to her brothers, Roger and Reynard, and other relatives. An acerbic hunchback, Lord Todd, was heard saying, Lady Ellen must be a sorceress, for she 
has made it rain inside the rock all year. The death of Sir Theon Lannister in the fourth Blackfire Rebellion rose his father Geralt, who took firm control over the Westerlands. The reign of the rains was over. After that, Alan was accused of trying to bed the third son of Lord Geralt, Titus Lannister, which resulted in her removal from Casterly Rock and marriage to Lord Walderan Tarback. Roger Rain who succeeded Robert, was the Lord of Castamere during the rule of Geralt's successor, Lord Titus Lannister. The Reigns had prospered greatly under Titus's misrule. Both Roger and Sir Reynard extracted large amounts of gold from Titus. After the War of the Nine Penny Kings, Titus's son and heir, Sir Tywin Lannister, demanded repayment of the gold that was lent out. But Roger reportedly laughed and told his vassals to do nothing. This eventually led Tywin to summon the Reigns and the Tarbacks to answer for their crimes. They chose defiance instead, and with it started the Rain Tarback Rebellion against their Lannister overlords. Tarback Hall was the first to feel Tywin's wrath, and how Starback was exterminated, including Ellen. After an unsuccessful battle against the Lannister host led by Tywin, Sir Reynard and the wounded Lord Roger took refuge in the mines on underneath Castamere. Reynard, once his folk were safe, offered terms to Tywin. Instead, Tywin ordered the sealing of Castamere's entrances and the diverting of nearby water into the mine, causing the deaths of all within. The downfall of the rains is popularized in a song called The Rains of Castamere. The River Road is a major road which begins in Casterly Rock and extends northeast through the Westerlands past Sarsfield and the Golden Tooth to River Run in the Riverlands. It then runs east along the Red Fork of the Trident to the inn at the crossroads, where it meets the King's Road, which runs north and south, and the High Road, which runs east to the Vale of Farron. The Gold Road is a major road in southern Westeros. Beginning at the Lion Gate of King's Landing in the Crown Lands, it extends west along the Blackwater Rush and then through a portion of the Northern Reach. The Castle of Deep Den guards the Gold Road as it passes through the hills of the Westerlands. The road ends at Lannisport and Casterly Rock. The Gold Road was built after House Targaryen's War of Conquest. Its route passes near the Field of Fire, House Lannister of Casterly Rock, one of the great houses of Seven Kingdoms and the principal house of the Westerlands. Their seat is Casterly Rock, though another branch exists that is based in nearby Lannisport. The unofficial motto of of Lannisters is a, a Lannister always pays his debts. The Warden of the West is a Lannister by tradition. Fair-haired, tall and handsome, the Lannisters are the blood of Fandal adventurers who carved out a mighty kingdom in the western hills and valleys. Through the female line, they boast of descent from Lan the Clever. The Lannisters reigned as kings of the Rock until they fell to the Targaryen conquest, but were allowed to remain the liege lords of the Westerlands. The house had fallen on hard times during the rule of Lord Titus, but was restored to its former glory by Lord Tywin. His daughter Cersei is the queen of King Robert I Baratheon, while her twin Sir Jaime is a knight of Robert's Kingsguard. Members of the family tend to have golden hair and emerald green eyes. The keep at Casterly Rock sits on top of a gold mine built into the very rock from that lofty yet uncomfortable position, House Lannister rules over the Westerlands and influences all of Westeros by virtue of the kingdom's purse strings. House Lannister possessed an ancestral Valyrian steel greatsword called Brightroar, but it was lost when King Tommen's second Lannister went on a quest to Valyria and never returned. The Lannisters have been looking for a replacement ever since though they have not stopped looking for their own lost ancestral sword. When Lelia Lannister, the Dowager Queen of the Iron Islands, was mutilated by drowned men, her nephew, the King of the Rock, began a war which left the Iron Islands impoverished. In more recent times, during the lordship of Titus Lannister, the house fell on hard times. Titus's weakness allowed him to be bullied by his vassals. Eventually, his son Tywin brought the wavered banner 
Bannerman to heal and restored the house to its former glory. Soon thereafter, Tywin was made Hand of the King by Aerys II Targaryen, holding that position for many years. When Aerys was held hostage by Denis Darklin, Tywin's conservative approach took six months to resolve the conflict. This instigated Aerys's paranoia and drove a wedge between the two, along with the king's lusting after Tywin's wife, cousin, and trusted confidant, Joanna. Tywin was never a jovial man, but when Joanna died birthing their third child, Tyrion, he was much saddened, and his brother Kevin became his right hand. Their sister Janna took a maternal role over the children. His second brother, Tyget, died of a pox, and their brother Garion sailed off on a journey to Valyria, never to be seen again. Despite Tywin's attempts to ensure a strong legacy, life at Casterly Rock was dysfunctional at best. His twin children Cersei and Jaime began an incestuous relationship at an early age. Cersei, while a young maid, visited a woods witch called Maggie the Frog, who shared portents of Cersei's future that planted seeds of her paranoia. Cersei murdered her friend, Malara Hatherspoon, who had witnessed the prophecy. Tyrion, when 13 years old, was out with Jaime when he met and married a girl named Tysha, a match which was quickly and savagely ended by Lord Tywin. Tywin offered Tyrion to house his Martell, Hightower, Royce, Florent, and Tully, but he was rejected by all. Jaime was a promising young knight, dubbed by Sir Arthur Dane. Tywin was devastated when Jaime joined King Aerys's King's God, breaking off a betrothal to Lysa Tully. Upon this action, which he perceived as the Mad King stealing his heir, coupled with the Mad King's refusal to wed Prince Rhaegar Targaryen to Cersei, Tywin resigned the handship. This flew in the face of Jaime's plan, which was to be closer to Cersei. He was kept in King's Landing while Cersei returned to Casterly Rock. During Robert's Rebellion, the Lannisters stayed neutral for the majority of the war. Only after the defeat of Prince Rhaegar at the Trident did Lord Tywin bestir himself to join Robert Baratheon against the Targaryen dynasty, perpetrating the sack of King's Landing. When the Lannister loyalist Grandmaster Pycelle suggested the gates be opened, there Sir Jaime Lannister, still a King's Guard, slew Aerys, the last crowned Targaryen king. Meanwhile, Tywin's knights killed the rest of the Targaryens in the capital to prove their commitment to Robert's cause. Afterwards, Tywin's daughter Cersei was wed to King Robert. Much of Lord Tywin's energy is directed inward, ensuring all of his relatives do their part to uphold the family name. The words of House Lannister are, Hear me roar. Casterly Rock nicknamed The Rock, is a castle and the seat of House Lannister, the capital of the Westerlands. It overlooks the harbor of Lannisport and the Sunset Sea. Casterly Rock is carved out of a great stone hill, colossal rock beside the Sunset Sea. It is popularly believed to resemble a lion in repose at sunset. The Casterlys of antiquity built a ring fort on the peak, and as millennia have passed, its natural defenses have been expanded with walls, gates, and watchtowers. The base of the rock contains large sea-carved caverns. The stone has been mined for thousands of years, so there are hundreds of mine shafts in the depths of the rock as well as yet untouched gold veins. The rock has been measured at three times the height of the wall or the high tower of Old Town. It is almost two leagues long from west to east and contains tunnels, dungeons, storerooms, barracks, halls, stables, stairways, courtyards, balconies, and gardens. In the bowels of the rock are rooms where caged lions were once kept, and cells the castle contains a sept. The lion's mouth, the main entry to Casterly Rock, is an enormous natural cavern reaching 200 feet high. Its steps are now wide enough for 20 riders. Its port has docks and shipyards and is accessible by longships and cogs. From below the rock, thunder can be heard where the sea comes in. The Golden Gallery contains treasures of the Lannisters, including gilded ornaments and walls. The Hall of Heroes is where the Lannisters and their close kin, who have died valiantly, are interred. 
the armor of Lannisters of old are also displayed in the hall. The stone garden is a god's wood with a twisted weirwood, a tenth the size of raven tree halls. Some claim that Lan the Clever still haunts the fortress which has never fallen. Lannisport is located less than a mile south of Casterly Rock, along the coast of the Sunset Sea, where the River Road, the Gold Road and the Ocean Road meet. It is one of the major ports of the Seven Kingdoms and it is the largest largest settlement in the Westerlands. Lannisport is smaller than King's Landing or Old Town, but larger than Galtown or White Harbor. Tywin Lannister, the Lord of Casterly Rock and Warden of the West, includes Shield of Lannisport amongst his titles. Of course, there are also other houses in Westerlands, but they are laying low in order not to hear the roar of Lannisters. However, I shall call all of them in case they face an abrupt extinction. Jazz. More lands, boasting descent from the legendary hero Pate the Plowman. Plums. The aged Lord Ossifer Plum married Princess Elena Targaryen during the reign of King Aegon IV Targaryen. He is said to have died during the bedding after conceiving a son. However, rumors suggest that Lord Ossifer had died before being able to consummate the marriage and that the child instead had been fathered by King Aegon himself, leading to the saying that Ossifer had had a cock six foot long. The words of House Plum are come try me Staxpears, Westforts, whose words are death over dishonor, Yaws, Clifton, Lorks, Rutigers, Heatherspoons, All Goods, Petleys, Brooms, Garners, Hawthorns, Doggets, Droxes, Myats, Spains, Speckledons, whose words are Unflinching, Spicers of Castamere, Hamels, Ferrens, Folvels, Foots, Yarviks, and Wickeries. A similarity of their arms to those of House Rain may indicate that they originate from a bastard line of an extinct house. Thank you for the attention and hope to see you in other parts of Westeros.